All right, awesome and amazing students. This is part two of our chapter eight test review. Part one, we went over standard 8A and 8B. And here in part two, we're gonna go over standards 8C and F7. 8C is curve fitting, F7 is the angles, okay, are the angles. So on every test for 8C, you're gonna get a problem where you just have to solve for B, only solve for B, and that's it. So how do we solve for B? We've had plenty of practice on this. We're gonna divide by 15 first to isolate B, to get B by itself. Now, let's divide those numbers. 1,215 divided by 15. It's 81. We're gonna get 81. And that's gonna be B to the power of four because 15 divided by 15 is one. Now we know that a number to the power of four is 81. Do you think it's two times two times two times two? Three times three times three times three. Four times four times four times four or some other number. Well, you can either guess and check or we can go ahead and do the power. Two to the fourth power is 16, not the right answer. Three to the fourth power is 81. We know the answer is 80. Wait, whoa, whoa, no, it's not 81. The answer is three. But is there another way to figure this out? What is the opposite of fourth power? Yeah, opposite of fourth power is fourth root. So if I fourth root both sides, I'm going to get the answer. So to do fourth root in your graphing calculators, you'll press four, math, five. So again, you have to press four, math. The math button shows you this menu right here. And if you look at option five, there is an x root button. That x root means we can take any root we want, fourth root, fifth root, cube root, square root, all of that. So if I type the number five or press five after scrolling down, I will get fourth root and fourth root of 81 is three. And that would be your answer. So again, if you want to do cube root, you can press three math five, three math five, that will give you cube root. If you want to do fourth root, you press four, math, option five, that gives you fourth root. If you want to do fifth root, you press five, math, five. If you want to do sixth root, six, math, five, and that will give you your, your answers for these questions. All right, number two, number two, write the exponential equation of the curve through the coordinates one comma 14 and 3, 686. All right, so there are two ways to do this type of problem. As we remember, one way is to guess and check what multiplier would work. Our second option is to create an equation. So the way to create an equation is we start at 14, we multiply by our multiplier how many times? Yeah, we know it's two times. But to get from one to three is how many steps? Yeah, two steps. And if we are trying to reach the number 686, we're gonna write 686 right here or 686 right here. It doesn't matter where you write it. But to make it look like this equation, we're going to go ahead and write it on the left-hand side. All right, so if we go ahead and solve this, just like we did the first problem, we can figure out our multiplier pretty quickly. So step one, divide by 14. 686 divided by 14. It's 49. It's 49. And 49 equals b squared. What number squared is 49? Is it 2 times 2, 3 times 3, 4 times 4? Five times five, six times six, seven times seven, or something higher. We know the answer is seven. But to take the square root, 
would get rid of the square. And what's the square root of 49? The answer is 7. We get our answer of 7. Meaning, if you can guess and check, you would get multiplication by 7 after a few trials. So you can try 14 times 2, 14 times 3, until you get your number. But the only way that works is 14 times 7. The answer is 98. And 98 times 7. 98 times 7 is 686. So we, that's the only way to get our answer. Now, we, knew, we do need to get our start value. Our starting value is the only thing that remains for this problem. So if we divide by 7, 14 divided by 7 would be 2. These numbers are not necessary to come up with an equation because we are done with this question. So step 1, create an equation or a table and decide what the multiplier would be. Since the multiplier is 7, we know it has to be 7 to the power of x. But what's the starting value? The starting value was 0, 2. So that would be the equation. So as I'd like to show you before, we start with 2 and we multiply by 7 repeatedly. Read your equation as if it was English. Start with 2, multiply by 7 repeatedly. And that would give you your equation. Since this question asks you for only the equation, you do not need to figure out the rest of the table because those numbers were not necessary. Okay, let's go to number three. Number three asks you to write the exponential equation of the curve graphed below. So one thing I do want to point out is this right here is actually just a slope triangle of sorts. It is a little bit confusing because why do they have these numbers 0 0.5 there and 1? It's actually a negative 0 0.5. What that means is from this dot, we're going down 0 0.5 and over 1. So we have to carefully tell me, or we have to carefully decide what numbers these actually are. What is the coordinate of that dot? We need that because that is the y-intercept. So it looks like we're counting by 1, 2, 3. It's counting by 1s. Over here, we're counting by 1s as well. So if I look at this coordinate, what would be that coordinate? 0 comma 0 0.5. Oh, I messed that up. It's not 0 comma 0 0.5, right? What is that dot right there? Yeah, that dot is 0 comma 1. 0 comma 1. This dot right here is 1 comma 0 0.5. So what's our starting value? Our starting value is the y-intercept, so we have 0, 1. Our multiplier is, well, how do you go from 1 to 0, 0.5? What do you have to multiply by? 1 times 0, 0.5 is 0, 0.5. So this is our equation. Now, really quickly, is that 1? Does that 1 ever do anything for us? No? So then we know our final equation does not need to have the 1 there. That would be the correct answer. If you did write it like this, this is OK. It's just the 1 really is not necessary to be there since it's just multiplication by 1. OK, let's go to the hardest problem on this page, which is a problem that has a negative in it. Carefully notice, this does say negative 1, comma 375. And if there's no table written there for you, create one. It's going to be very helpful for you. So the first coordinate is negative 1, 375. The second coordinate is 2, 3. How many steps of multiplication will it take to get to there? It'll take three steps. So what I do is I start with 375, and I multiply by my multiplier three steps to get to the number 3. Kind of confusing this one is, but we know it's going to take three steps. So really quickly, can you tell me, is this exponential growth or is it exponential decay? 
yeah. It's exponential decay because the numbers are getting down, uh, going down, meaning the multiplier has to be a decimal or even a fraction. Well, you can try to guess, maybe try different numbers. 375 times 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. One, two, three steps. 0 0.5 is way too big. So you might have to try smaller numbers. 375 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.1. Uh, 0 0.1 seems to be a little bit too small. Well, instead of guessing and checking, you could create an, an equation. How far is negative 1 from 2? We know it's going to take three steps. Otherwise, you can see it from the table that it takes three steps of multiplication. All right, how do we solve this? Step one, divide both sides by 375. What is 3 divided by 375? The answer is 0 0.008. 0 0.008, okay. And that's to the third power. Taking the cube root of both sides, cube root in our calculator. 3 math 5, cube root. Otherwise, you can do math option 4. Math option 4 is cube root. Pressing the math option, we're going to get the cube root of 0. 0, 0, 0.008 is 0.2. So we get the answer of B is 0 0.2. Okay. All right. That means our multiplier is 0 0.2. That's huge. Could you have guessed and checked that? Yeah, you could have guessed and checked that. As a matter of fact, we can do that right now. 375 times 0.2 times 0.2 times 0.2. Gives us our answer. Three steps. But let's see what these numbers are. We need all these numbers in our table, except for the three. That one doesn't matter anymore. We need the starting value. 375 times 0.2 is 75. 75 times 0.2 is 15. 15 times 0.2 is 3. And 3 times 0.2 is 0 0.6. So for our final answer, the starting value is 75. It starts with 75. And we multiply by 0 0.2. And that is our answer. OK, lastly, we are going to go over standard F7. F7 is going to be the angles. So remember, for the angles, you're either going to get that they add up to 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or they are equal. Okay. If it's 90 degrees, it's called complementary. If it's 180 degrees, it's called supplementary. And if it's equal, it's typically because they're vertical, vertical angles. Okay. So using this idea. Is this situation 90, 180, or equal? Yeah. Since this is a straight line, straight lines mean they are 180 degrees. So if I go ahead and say x minus 3 plus 153, we know that together these angles form 180 degrees. For letter B, these two angles create a right angle, meaning these two angles will add up to 90 degrees. So 4x plus 1 plus 9 plus x equals 90. And you solve that. For the next one over here, given the shape of the letter X. We're given the shape of the letter X, and with, we have that they're across from each other. If they're across from each other, we know these things are called vertical angles. And vertical angles are equal. So 
So can we solve that? Let's see. To solve this one, we'd set 4b minus 20 equal to b plus 17. And you'd need to solve that because those ones are equal. This last one's a little bit tricky because we do have angles across from each other. And we also have angles that are um, on a straight line to each other. So the way that we're going to solve this one is we're going to go ahead and say these are equal first. Because this one says y, this one says x. That's an issue. So we're going to solve this one first. We're going to go ahead and say y plus 23 equals 63. Solve that one. And the second way to solve this one would be to see the straight line. And the straight line, we know that they add up to 180 degrees. So our second equation we would need to solve here would be the one where we have 180 degrees. So this angle plus this angle equals 180 degrees, straight line. So 2x minus 17 plus this angle, which says 63 degrees would create a straight line. And we can go ahead and solve them. So all at once, let's go ahead and solve every single question on this page, which we have the first one, which was supplementary angles. If we solve this one, we're going to go ahead and get x plus 150 equals 180. Subtracting 150 to both sides, we're going to get x equals 30. That would be our answer. For the second one, we have a lot of like terms. 4x plus nine, no, 4x plus x is 5x. 1 plus 9 is 10. So we're going to get an equation that looks like this. Subtracting 10 from both sides, we're going to get 5x equals 80. And very carefully solving by division, 80 divided by 5, we know the answer is, oh man kind of struggle with this one. Is it 20? No. It's less. Let's do a little bit of calculations. I don't want to use my mental math on this one because I can make a mistake. 80 divided by 5. It's 16. 16. Oh, it's pretty off there. So x equals 16 for letter B. Okay, letter C was the vertical angles where we set them equal to each other. So I want to get B on one side. I'm going to go ahead and subtract B to this side. And I'm going to go ahead and add 20 to the right side since it says subtraction. We're going to add. So 4B minus B is 3B. 17 plus 20 is very carefully, we get 37, right? 37. Dividing both sides by 3, it looks like we're going to get a decimal for this one. 37 divided by 3. It's approximately 12.3333. We get the answer of 37 over 3, which is approximately 12.33. Or 12.3 with a bar on top, since the 3s go on forever. So that would be our answer. If you're rounding, please use the approximate symbol. If the answer is exact, use the equal symbol. OK, last question is letter D, which is the most difficult question on this page, which has a solving for two angles. The first angle we solved for was with vertical angles. So vertical angles would be equal. Setting these two equal to each other, we get y plus 23 equals 63. Subtracting 23 to both sides gives us the answer of 40. So the answer for y is 40. You could plug in 40 into this one and solve for the straight angle right there if you wanted to. That'd just be a little complicated. The way we solve for x here would be we're going to use the idea that they create a straight line. If it creates a straight line, then we know it forms 180 degrees, a supplementary pair. OK, so really carefully, I'm going to add these two numbers together, the like terms. Negative 17 plus 63. That would be 46. 
we get 46. So 2x plus 46 equals 180. If I subtract 46 to both sides, I will get, let's put it over here, 2x equals 180 minus 46 is, I believe, 134. I, I really hope I did that correctly. Let's see. 180 minus 46. It's 134. Good. 134 divided by 2. The answer is 67. We get the final answer of x equals 67. And we're done. So our goal for this um, test is to make sure to study, practice. Remember, everything on this standard will always be 90, 180, or equal. Okay. Remember to go over these problems from standard 8C, which is curve fitting, where you need to know how to do cube root, fourth root, and fifth root. We also had the word problems, which were involving percent increase and decrease, where everything starts with 100. Be careful about this one. Study that one up. And we also went over standard 8A, which was growth and decay, and evaluating exponential functions. Good luck on your test, everybody. Have a great rest of your day as well.